Hey you guys and welcome to another channel teaching. My name is Rena Wells. I'm highly intuitive and I'm a medicine woman. I work with plants and uh, we'll be hopefully getting back to running ayahuasca retreats in Mexico. Uh, if you guys want to know more about me, all that info is down below. Go take a look at my website. I have some blogs on there and uh, yeah, take a look around and we're going to get started. So thank you guys for bearing with me in regards to bringing this week's channel teachings forward. Uh, my son school's classroom had closed down and so we're in a COVID quarantine right now. He's currently sick with the, well, his fever just broke today. That's because of all the natural medicines that I make from the plants. And I've been doing that for years. I don't use things like um, store-bought pharmaceuticals. So yeah, so that's why these are late and my kids are under quarantine now. And uh, it's just a little strict here in Canada. So um, that's why these are late. So if you didn't know, that's the drama that's been going on. But let's get started. Spirit wanted to bring through some teachings, and this has been pondering in my mind for a little bit, but they're saying that now uh, there's a good foundation here if you've been listening to some of these teachings and you guys know my work and that I help highly sensitive souls learn how to get back into touch from living from the inside out and how to come from a place of honoring your intuition, your uh, energy discernment, knowing what, what you're connecting to, who you're talking to, all of that from the inside and to ignite our natural empathic abilities and our highly sensitive way of living. Every human on this planet is an empath. Every human has psychic gifts. We communicated this way with our mothers from the inside of the womb. You know, we didn't have vocal cords or any other way of communicating, but through intuition. And that was tapped in very deep where the womb is located in the sacral areas, which is where our intuition is and our gut. It is the mother and the womb and the baby closest together in that gut area in the pelvic region. And so this is the focus that I teach people and help people to discern energies. Uh, and when you work with me, um, or even if you come to a retreat and work with me, um, I'm able to help you decipher your visions and your past lives and all these types of different symbolisms because I meet you deep in that pelvic floor where we all meet. And so Spirit is bringing this up because this week's teachings is, is all about freedom and what freedom really means to us in the four elements. So where are we free in our mental capacity? Where are we free in our physical bodies? Where are in our physical world as well? Where are we free in our emotions and where are we free in regards to, um, what do we have? We have in our fire, in our action, in our, in our mission work, right? And all of those four elements, and this is where I work as a medicine woman. I work with the four directions. I work with the four elements. I'm a moon dancer. Um, so all of these aspects, I work very closely with earth energy and father creator energy. And so when these four elements come together, you're then able to access spirit, which is the creator force energy, which is what becomes manifested in our 3D world. And so spirit really wants to bring about, you know, what these high level soul connections are about, what freedom really is. And when you come together with a twin flame and you have met your sacred partner and you have had activation, you're currently in separation because most twins are in separation. I don't believe there are many twins that are in union, mainly because it is a highly sacred, holy connection. And I don't see Jesus and Mary Magdalene walking around on this planet. <laughs> and I'm just being honest. Uh, the healing mission is profound. Okay. The healing mission with twins is profound. And uh, I'm not saying that there aren't twins. I believe there are some, but it's very far and few in between. And the reason for that is because of the magnitude of the mission work that needs to come through two balanced whole individuals. Now, Spirit wanted me to talk about freedom this week because freedom is the freedom of the soul in all of those four elements and the ability to then surrender those four elements unto Spirit, unto the Father energy and onto the Mother, grounding it and letting it go and giving that to, to Spirit. And so I'm sorry if you also hear my son hacking or anything like that. He is sick and we our rooms are connected and you can hear him through the vent. So if you do hear that, I'm sorry. He is uh, most likely does have COVID. <laughs> We're getting tested uh, in a couple of days. So um, 
that being said, um, Spirit wants to talk about where our relationships have been in sacred partnership in the earth plane and why that seems so controlling and why there's a high divorce rate on the planet right now. And Spirit wanted to get into that because we're going to talk about the freedom of the soul and the freedom of what twin flames actually come about and why it doesn't follow any relationship rules of where humanity currently resides. This is something that I first talked about in the first couple of teachings, so you may want to go back and listen to the first two or three to get a good understanding of where we're moving in relationships on the earth plane and how that has evolved over time, okay? Because uh, marriages and unions and relationships and bringing um, people together has been for the act of survival. We as a human consciousness are moving out of survival mentality, which is a lack mentality, into a faith mentality, into a surrendered mentality, and into an abundance mentality, and into the mysticism world. And you can't move into mysticism without surrendering faith, trust, and a prosperous type of way of thinking and feeling and actioning and being in your world within those four elements. And so Spirit wanted to bring this compound amount of teachings through because that's what Twin Flames teach. So a lot of my followers have met their twin or their divine counterpart and they've had an activation. Let's take a look at what happens with uh, regular relationships on the planet. And I'm not saying this to say to judge it. We all need to go through regular relationships, whatever we label that as, as soulmates, twin, not even twin flames, sorry, soulmates, karmics, um, karmic soulmates, uh, stepping stone soulmate, whatever those labels are. Anything beyond uh, of um, before you hit a high level connection that God has created for you, that spirit has uh, destined for you with your soul's uh, faded path with this person, which is a twin flame or a high level soulmate, okay? Whatever you call it. I call it twin flame. I know that that term is overused, but it is what it is, right? Um, so let's take a look at where the control aspect happens and why marriages and whatnot are, are dying off on the planet and why divorce rate is so high. Divorce rate is so high and relationships are like in and out, back and forth. Uh, dating seems to be a real nu nu <laughs> nuisance right now, Spirit is saying. It's mainly because of the awakening process that's happening on the planet. And depending on where you are in your evolutionary process, there may still be a soulmate or a karmic situation that you may need to venture into because remember, relationships are the best way for the fastest growth and the fastest way to have um, any, anything mirrored back to you. You will know when these people come forward and um, you will immediately start to see your mirrors. Uh, most likely if, you, if you're really close to coming into union with your twin or you're really on mission work or you're already uh, being of service to spirit, you will notice that when a soulmate does come in, it, it stifles out fairly quickly or you go on one date and you're like, no, I already learned that lesson. So it's a type of uh, redefining yourself. But for those that are um, not at that point and not in mission, the other aspect is that you've met your twin, you're in separation and nothing is happening and you're healing and it feels stagnant. Spirit may definitely bring you a soulmate to be in a type of commitment, who knows, six months, five years, who knows how long that is, um, in, a, in an aspect to help you surrender the twin flame connection in order to help you dig deeper into yourself and to mirror the subconscious wounds that still require healing before you can come into a divine counterpart union. And again, you guys, there's nothing wrong with that. That is very much needed on the planet. Not everyone gets into a very high level um, of, or expansive, I should say. It's not even a high, high is, you know, there's no levels here. It's just the ex the extent of what you can expand your consciousness in order to house your mission and such a potent mission container, right? Your, your mission is going to be very potent and very um, high and some people, and it's not very expansive. And, and for a lot of people that I work with who are highly sensitive, they're not entirely sure about their mission, but they're so sensitive that they, are, they know that they're here for greatness. And you know that because you've had this feeling your entire life, but the process to get into that greatness 
takes very deep, deep work and deep, deep healing. This is where I come in because I'm able to sit with you through very dark aspects of no matter what that those subconscious patterns are and and bring them up to 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 the surface so that we could take a look at them at a closer at a closer look and what spirit has to say in regards to the next steps in order to heal that. But, you know, spirit is bringing this up in regards to uh, the soulmate connections and if we need to be in other relationships it's to mirror those aspects and those subconscious patterns you know when we're by ourselves we can get very comfortable <laughs> in our world and unless we don't have something driving us that's it that's leading the godhead right so for instance for me i am on mission i this is my source of income i do not um and i've been able to do this for the last four years and support my family um, but I left a six figure government job, uh, as a business analyst, senior business analyst and project manager. So in it, so I had a very high position within the government and I left that, you know, um, because it, it, I needed a motivator and my motivator was to build this from scratch, right. And to be of service. And, uh, as my path and I'm, it hasn't been easy, you guys, but I'm telling you that if I didn't have my mission, um to reflect where my own subconscious patterns are to help me step into my biggest greatness right and if you guys have been following me for a while you'll notice my stagnancy right like i'm posting i'm not posting and and even my own twin flame journey there's you know i had a hard time even accepting this path and when i didn't accept it you know my bookings went down and i was like what is happening in my life <laughs> um so there always has to be a relationship whether that be a person whether that be your work whether that be your relationship to other people there is a form of reflection you know we're not all complete hermits living in a cave not having anything to do right and so whatever your relationship is take a look at those relations that is going to be your direct mirror that's going to bring up those subconscious patterns and when those subconscious patterns come up that is within us right yes we may deflect and say wow that person triggered me but they've already triggered something within us and this isn't to you know i know it, the healing process can be very hard when you know we are tired of taking ownership for our stuff and we re-victimize ourselves i don't want you guys to re-victimize yourself yes there these aspects of being in relationship relationships, soulmate connections, whatever it, your relationship you're in right now that's reflecting in your 3D world is trying to show you a subconscious pattern. Spirit is saying, yes, even if it's something unfair, if it reactivates of re-victimization, spirit wants you to see, yes, where you have been re-victimized re within yourself and the allowance of that re-victimization within self, but yet the desire to not want to feel that anymore we have to go through different aspects in our life and if things continue in this holographic world are continuously reflected back to us to reiterate to us do you want to feel this way right now and if you do not then there is a way to exit out of it and that and and to exit out of that is another process but it is an exit to freedom right so this is where we can look at when we come into that uh, pattern and we notice that we're being re-victimized. We realize, hey, I'm being re-victimized right now. Um, and so because of that, if you're being re-victimized, take a look at the four elements that are there. Is there a mental pattern that's currently trying to show you how you speak to yourself on the inside? If you hear judgmental words on the inside or an angry voice on the inside, do your best to become the observer of that mental thought process and to take a look at the mental world and what's going on the mental capacity within your brain and whose voice that it is it your mother's voice is it a grandparent's voice is it a teacher's voice and if you're able to pinpoint that you can then start to realize that you have reiterated that voice over and over again now the mental aspect will also play on the water element, which is always your emotions. The ego, the mind, always attaches to an emotion. This is where a lot of people get very obsessive, very possessive, very stuck in codependent patterns because the emotions feed off the mental energy, okay? 
and will reiterate patterns from the past. So whenever you have a thought first, it will always attach to a mind, I mean to an emotion, okay? Whenever you can think of something, it will immediately attach to an emotion. That will always be an ego response. That is not the true divinity of God at all. That is, in fact, your reference library, your mental mind, re-bringing up uh, traumas from the past, something that may have been uh, stored away in the mental uh, library way back, that it's referencing an energy of an emotion that's re-triggering a thought process. And this is where a lot of coaches, a lot of healers, a lot of people in the spiritual community, uh, actually basically most of humanity, but if you're actually doing healing work, this is where a lot of spiritual bypassing and, and creating per, a spiritual personas start to happen because people are stuck between this mind and heart duality, okay? This is a very fighting aspect. Even your psychic abilities can run in this mind and heart duality. But if we can start to take a look and be the observer of this and not to action that, okay, we will then create more freedom and space. And by doing that is we bring in the observer mode, which is the God presence. We either pray or meditate or create space and pauses before action and reaction. If you can catch those patterns, and that's the key, you guys, is to catch those patterns before they, they um, the reactionary auto robot is what I call it, or the zombie. I used to tell my children, we got to act like the zombies today, right? That auto reflex, right? <laughs> um, yeah, my, kid, my children grew up believing that if it was a zombie and programmed in this world. So um, they've been, they I've probably messed them up, but I try to keep them very pure their whole life so that they can actually see the reality of this world. I may have stolen some of their childhood, but I know I'm raising some warriors. And so um, that whole aspect is, is very much a practice in itself is to create that space. And spirit is bringing this through because they want to show you where humanity is stuck in these code of pattern, codependent patterns, in personas, various different types of personas, even a spiritual persona, you know, I could very easily attach to, you know, I'm a medicine woman and this is my path and that could be taken from me tomorrow. So I can't even attach to that. God may come through and say, no, Rena, you're now going to be a Catholic nun and that's it. And I will have to follow, you know, like <laughs> as, a, as an extreme example. But if that's what it is, that's what it is, right? And so we can't become attached to these personas that we've created. All we know is the energy vibration of the frequency to follow, okay? Whew. So spirit is bringing this through because the relationship aspects with soulmates and karmics and all of that, you're going to notice that there's always going to be a form of restriction. You're going to have to compromise, okay, in these relationships. You're going to have to debate with the person back and forth, okay? Whoever that person is, could be your mother, could be your, your lover, whoever this person is in your relation with, could be your boss, right? You're going to have to negotiate, right? Mental energy, the, the air energy with the water energy, right? And then based on that, you're going to have to action and be, it's a forcible action because it's made from the mental realm, right? It's from that heart and mind duality. Then you're going to have to action based on that. And that's why you feel so tired, right? That's why you don't want to do your job no more right guys that's why you just uh, i hate this it's the same all day all day old cycle right that's because you have to force yourself into that action because you're working out of mind and heart duality then when you're you're using up your elements within your own body because remember guys you come from the earth so these four elements are very important in working with that right so now you're in the mental the mental mind <clears throat> then you're attaching the emotion to it because that is feeding some kind of pattern, right, um, in the mind, right? And so when you're stuck in the heart and mind duality and maybe a pers persona that you, we've created. And again, guys, this is this is hard stuff to break, right? This is why I work with ayahuasca and psychedelics because uh, I don't believe humans can break. Like, this takes a long time to break and plants actually, like, get in there and just, I mean, blow everything open. But again, you have to be ready for this kind of medicine because it is very potent. Um so yeah, so I'm just bringing that up, but there's other ways of breaking that too. Um, but, and you can find all kinds of different techniques 
all over the place. But I'm not going to go into the techniques. I want to give you the basis of this, of why people are stuck in relationships. And so that action becomes very, you know, tiresome because it's not inspired action from God's source, right? It's inspired action that's forcible, you know, that we have to rub two sticks together to get the fire going. And you know how hard that can be, right? When you're in, out in the woods and you're rubbing two sticks together to create friction, to create the fire. That is a man-made fire. That is not a lightning bolt and igniting the fire, you know. Um, so then we have, you know, we've done uh, the fire, the water, the mental. And now we're going to do the, the physical world and our temple. Then we have to put the action in to follow all of that. Now, what's left out, out of all of that once we action and we and we manifest that okay that's when we plan with somebody right we compromise with somebody this is where we're talking to somebody like okay i did this to you and i promise i won't repeat that pattern and the other person's like yes and i won't do this pattern and then you make an agreement and then you try to work it out that's all logical human control okay this is working from the outside stimulus right you hurt me now i have to react because of this right so spirit is saying these four elements, it becomes very tiresome because the spirit is left out of it. You may even meditate with your partner together. You may even do medicine with your partner. You may do all of these things together. But again, it's still an outside stimulus, okay? Um, and you can gain access to spirit with a karmic partner or with a karmic soulmate and have little brief moments of connection but it won't last right because god only made you for your twin right and so especially if you've met your twin um coming into that you can still do that with a very close soulmate as well if you're not meant to be with your twin in this lifetime or if that's something that's not happening spirit will make give you a twin that you can build that with right but Remember, if you're destined to be with your twin, you will know in this lifetime. Your mission will come down. You, you just have a knowing, right? And it's not an attached knowing. It means that you've moved on and, and you're allowing and you're open and your life is great and everything feels good. And, you know, different soulmates will show up for you. But that's a different aspect. I'm talking to those that still don't know that path yet and are still very much trying to figure out uh, this uh, aspect of freedom in their life and so the relationships in your life are trying to show you this why it's not working anymore okay it's going to keep pushing us deeper and deeper and deeper within ourselves we're going to attract partners that are going to bring up that wounding to say yes you need to work on this now and yes you need to work on this now but it's going to be a stimulated response from outside of self based on what the other person's actions and reactions are to yours and this debating back and forth keeps going on okay it happens and on and on and on and, on. and you can leave that partner and then get involved somebody else and it happens again and you're like why does this keep happening spirit is saying that this is really to bring you into a surrendered space with spirit right with with father god energy and mother god energy right there's two and there's two and they're one and the same okay but it's the yin yang balance to know mother earth and to know the creator of the stars and the suns and the galaxies so uh that aspect is that we continue to go through these human cycles until we are truly 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 ready to surrender and spirit, and that means surrendering our entire life to spirit. And that can't happen overnight, guys. That is a bit-by-bit bit aspect. It might be that you work on the mental world and the psychological aspects of the brain first, right? And the mind patterns of your trauma first, or however you were raised. Then we may decide to then look at the emotions and how they interconnect with the mind. And you know what, guys? Sometimes you have to do each element bit by bit. This is why I do like a VIP with very little people once a year um, who apply for my coaching because we go through every one of these elements. Um, it's highly transformative. However, it's a lot of work <laughs> um, because you've got to look at every element within these relationships that are showing you inside of yourself, okay, this person has triggered me in this way mentally. It reminds me of my mother or it reminds me of this person and it makes me feel this way. 
and it's making me action this way. And then what do I do in my physical world? Oh my God, then I go and I drink or I, you know, overeat or I lay in bed all day or, you know, so the spirit wants you to notice the sequential format of what's happening. And this may be something that you guys can work on on your own and start your own journal, you know, with the four elements and seeing where they apply in your life, in your relationships. And this is a, this is a purposeful spirit is saying, God saying, I did this purposely so that you can actually come to source energy, to spirit on your own in complete surrender. Say, I have no, I, I give up. I'm done with these cycles. I'm done with these kind of relationships. I'm done with this, con trying to control this. I'm, I see where my control is. I see, you know, until we come on humble knee and we're like, yeah, I'm over it. You know, and then spirit will then bring maybe a new vibration with maybe slightly the same as the last aspect, you know, the last partner or the last boss um, to redefine you again, uh, but more for you to then integrate your lessons, right? Because there is a process here, guys, that we have in healing. It's like first you get ignited, right? First you get triggered. It's the, you get triggered out of everything. Then it's that back and forth of defining, is it me? Is it you? Do I need to, I have to, it's inside of myself. I need to go in. I have to heal this now. I have to purge this. I have to action this. And when you finally get the lesson, then it's integration. Then it's moving into your world and you will then be tested by spirit and by your higher self it, to see, okay, did you learn that lesson? Let's see. And, and you know, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Because all of a sudden something will show up and you'll be like, no, 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 no. I just learned that. I just learned that. That's a no. That's a no. That's a no. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You're like, I'm not dealing with that. You're like, oh, wow. And, and, and some of these cycles can be really long and some of them can be really short, you know? Um, I know for me and my own relationships, you know, I had to go through uh, 10 years with my ex-husband and then, you know, back and forth with one karmic partner, you know, on and off for almost five years. Let me tell you, that was hell. And, you know, little relationships in between. And I went through, I don't know how many partners I've been through, you guys, but Spirit put me, you know, through many, 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 many forms of relationships to understand myself. Then there comes a point where spirit will know that you are ready to come back into union with your twin, okay? Now, twins don't work in that same controlling way. And this is why humanity, spirit's telling me to back up for a minute. Spirit is saying the reason why humanity is at where they're at is because lots of people have met their twins. They've been activated. So that activation is currently pushing our world into finding who we're really meant for, Okay and to heal karmic cycles, and to come into our best self. But to come into your best self, to be reunited with your twin, you have to heal. The Spirit is saying, you don't have to be completely healed, but you have to be over that threshold of like 65% healed, okay? You have to, Spirit is saying, mostly like 70 and up for most of the twins here on the planet, okay? Because there's integration and other aspects that you can do, but you have to be mostly healed within yourself of your traumas that has happened in your life and that's why this is such a sacred holy union you've got to be mostly healed in those mental capacities that you know how to become the observer of the mind and not allow the mind to overtake you you have to then know that you can be emotionally intelligent and you can observe the emotions as much as the mind right where you are actioning your intuition where you have a strong bond with spirit where you have a daily routine every day spirit is saying that you are speaking to god source you are knowing where you are being led you are starting to practice your manifesting capabilities right and that you're doing this in your actions now right and then you're allowing the unfolding to happening in the physical world and only action and based on spirit when you start to hit this new way of being, right, it's a slow transition, I'm not going to lie. When I had to go hand in, you know, my cell phone, my pager, my Palm Pilot, whatever, my laptop into my, into my job, and I had to drop off all my technology, I can't tell you the anxiety that I had that I was not following um, my, my career, you know. I was following God. But that was scary, right? That was scary. It's like, what do I do now? <laughs> I have nobody to tell me what to do. It was very hard for me um, coming from such a structured background, right? Um, very analytical background. I had to deprogram my mind hardcore, you guys. 
And so spirit wants you to realize that this is a process, right? To decompressing the mind patterns, decompressing the emotions, right? Bring, it's almost like an inflation, an inflammation, an infection. You're taking it down a notch so that you can allow spirit to further come into your temple to work through you in these four elements. And that is the fifth element of God. This is why I love magic, white magic, okay, and working with earth. Um, and that is why they're showing me the pentagram, you know, and that's why the fifth element is very important is when spirit then leads all of those four elements. When we move closer to our twin flame union, we get practice, especially those uh, mostly divine feminines who have awakened first, who are starting mission. We, why mission work is so important because it enables you to be completely free within yourself, free of your twin, free of expectations, free of however anything life is going to unfold because the mission work allows you to follow source, the Godhead, right? Allows you to follow spirit instead of the mind and the negotiating and the compromising. And this is why twin flame unions are so freeing because by the point you come into union, both of you have already, you know, been healing the mental world, healing the emotional world, listening to your intuition, listening to source, and then completely surrendering to the complete unfolding in the physical world. You're honoring your temple, you're taking care of yourself, and you're simply going by where spirit leads you and you're finding great abundance and letting go of that control of the other realms that, you know, everybody in other relationships are stuck in, um, you know, compromising, working it out, uh, trying to figure it out yourself, promising each other, yes, we'll do this, and then we're going to action it, and that becomes tiring, and for highly sensitive souls and awakened souls who are here for a mission and to be in Twin Flame Union, and you guys know who you are, that way of living does not work anymore. It's not going to work for the way that you have done anything in your life. Your parenting, that's the foundation of how you operate, right? That's how you work through your vessel, through this space suit that we're here, that we're in, in this meat suit. And so that eventually becomes a way that we can't live anymore, the way that you work, even if you run your own business that way. All of those things are going to change. And this is what spirit is preparing us so that when you come into a twin flame union, why the mostly the masculine energy runs is because they're looking at that as like a ball and chain. Oh my God, that changes everything. Now I'm like stuck to Now I have to get married again. I have to go into another relationship, blah, 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 blah. But those are all the misconceptions of the other realm, right? Of what we've been conditioned and of what we think relationships are supposed to be like. Twin flame union is supposed to be easy, guys. So this is why, I, and I've known this my whole life. I remember as a child looking at my parents and looking at people that are married, and I'm like, why does love have to be so hard? It doesn't make any sense. Love does not have to be hard, you guys. Love is easy. Love is free-flowing. Like, you know, you love your kids. You know, yes, the day-to-day -day stuff gets hard. Trust me. I know. You know. The day-to-day -day stuff gets you frustrated. My dishes aren't done. I'm freaking out. Yeah, of course. Those things are gets you stressed out for sure. Um, but that love overcomes everything, right? You love your children no matter what. You love, like, it's just, you just love. So you do it. You know you have to do it. And you just suck it up and you do it. And you allow that love to come out. And you do it. And you enjoy it. And um, it's, it's to change the focus from the mundane into the love and be like, yeah, I love taking care of my family. I do enjoy it, you know, and, and I notice that in myself and I'm bringing that up. It's like, I love taking care of my kids and cooking. If I could do that every day for them and, you know, not run a business, I have to do mission work though, but not to, you know, if I had a partner that, you know, would help me and support me, then I would take great pride more so of feeling more in that love for my family to be able to do that. But I'm scattered in all kinds of energy, so I have to compromise a little bit and still work with this unfolding process and how to balance all of it out. It's not an easy process, right? And so Spirit wants you to realize that when you're ready to come into Twin Flame Union, you're going to be practicing this unfolding, practicing the faith, practicing the manifestation, seeing how it's looking in your life, instead of getting pulled into the suffering aspect and allowing it and being like, oh, okay, like this is trying to pull me into victimization again. Do I want that? No. Where, where can I 
what do I need to do in this aspect now? Because I'm not going to re-victimize myself. That means I need to action something. You will know because you've been um, practicing to this point. And so when Twin Flame Union um, comes together, Spirit is like, it becomes easy. And this is what I don't understand why twins who have state they come into union where it's it's they're still healing like i i don't get that because i've had glimpses of me and my twin and with aya and what that's like it's like oh my god this is so easy like loving him is so like doing anything with him is so easy being by it's not like it's just like i remember when he and i closed off the circle one night after ceremony and we were the last ones to go to bed and we were closing off the circle make sure everyone got to bed okay and everything and we're like, he's like, we're in training. And I'm like, yeah, we're in training as shamans for sure. And we're like, this just feels right. Like it just felt right to smudge with him. It just felt right to close off the, the circle. It just felt right. It becomes easy. So with your twin, um, it's just natural. There's no fighting. There's no compromising. There's no, like if you're cooking a meal, one will just know to grab the onions and the garlic and the other one will grab the tomatoes. Like there, it just flows that way because you're made as the one soul. Love does not, is not suffering. Love is not painful. Okay. If you have pain and suffering in your love connections, there's healing to do you guys. There's deep traumas that need to be healed that we need to go back of where we think love is suffering and hurtful. It's not. Those things come from stressful parents, <laughs> myself included, okay, that, you know, and, and I've done that to my kids, too. I was like, but that's not love, and and they know, children know that, that's not, it's not suffering or, or hurtful, it's just hard to maintain that in the world that we live in, because our world is not based on unconditional love, our economy, our world was built out of colonialism, war, bloodshed that intention behind the economy that we live on is not freedom either so if your calling entails to free yourself of the system and societal cultures as well and your lineage calls you to do that right i believe everyone's lineage is to do that and if but if you haven't recognized that yet you may disagree with that with what i'm saying but if you are called to that and you are recognizing that then you realize that freedom is to be in all aspects of the world and nature is free right nature is, is is abundant and free and we are part of nature and we are nature and so we are abundant and free as well but we don't we aren't in like that in society and our world was not built our, our economy and our systems were not built that way we are trying to go back to that and that's why twin flames are so important in the world because their love is ultimate freedom right you don't have to with your twin compromise about decisions you're both going to choose the same thing you don't have to debate about what to do right the planning you already know what the plan looks like because god gives you the plan right you're both operating in that natural unfolding you're both connected to source you're both feeling the inspired action feminine will receive it differently but masculine will receive it complementary you'll both get it downloaded at the same time you both will have the same feelings you both will he already have the mental capacity healed so you'll think you know in your feminine and masculine ways but it'll be complementary so that when you do verbalize it you'll be like oh that just clicked okay you'll be able to hear each other even if your telepathy is very strong and you're highly psychic twins, like my twin and I are highly psychic, there there will be definitely a telepathy aspect that you'll hear and already plan and be like, oh, yeah, 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 okay. And then you'll come together and talk and be like, oh, right, we already came to that consensus, you know. Um, your physical world will just merge and manifest. And the only action that's hard action to do is your own internal healing work, okay, because... Um, yeah thank you spirit okay they're bringing this up they're saying the healing aspect with your twins is very different than the healing that you're going to have with anybody else okay when you heal with your twin it's very individual work spirit is saying and this is this is the misconception in the twin flame community okay where healing happens a lot of people state in the twin flame community that your twin triggers you is going to bring up your dark stuff not the same way that it triggers you in other relationships, okay? It is not like, oh my God, my twin triggered that and he cheated and he brought up my pain and all of that. Those actions, right, thank you, Spirit. That's at the beginning of the activation process. Thank you, Spirit. However, Spirit is saying this is when you come into closer union with your twin, 
that physical stimulus will not be present because you would have healed that. This is coming close to union, guys, okay? It's a hard discerning point, Spirit is saying, between your twin flame, thank you, Spirit, and between the uh, other relationships is because they mirror in the fact of physical stimulus. That mirror runs coinciding together. However, the more that you heal, this is why healing is so important in separation on the twin flame journey, as you are moving through your own healing, you will start to realize, right, that whatever your twin does in the 3D will no longer trigger you. And when that shift happens, you will start to just realize the energies within yourself more so of what needs to heal. And when that happens, Spirit says you're getting closer to Twin Flame Union. Because when the twins come together, it's never going to be an outside trigger of what your twin says. You're going to notice their lack, but you don't need to say about their lack. You may say like, you know, uh, whatever else your conversation is, fair thing, you, uh, but it'll be complementary energies that both will be knowing enough that the other won't trigger the other because that physical stimulus will be gone. That's why that separation needs to happen. And that's why that freedom to find self in separation is so important. So when the twins come back together, that is completely gone. That codependency is completely gone. So that when issues and things come up to heal, the twins will feel them simultaneously. Thank you, Spirit. Simultaneously at the same time to do the inner work and then to merge even deeper. It's not going to be an anger thing with your twin. You're not going to be fighting with your twin. It's going to be, wow, okay, we need to heal. And you'll, we both need to heal this. You'll go into your separate corners. You'll do your own healing. And you'll come back with what you found. And it will just merge naturally. That's what Spirit is bringing through. So that's how easy it is. And you can't get that with any other partner. And that is the freedom of twins. Because you're when you work on yourself, you gain the freedom within. The other twin has the freedom. And you're like, wow. This is amazing. This is so freeing. And you can be best friends, lovers, and everything together with complete freedom without worrying of clingy, codependency. And, and, and this is why the karmic partners come through and why possessive karmic partners come through is to heal that codependency of what obsession is, what addiction is, what that stimulus is. And that's why twin flames are freeing. Okay, because they free up all of those four elements. And when you're in a twin flame union, and Spirit is bringing this up, that when you're in a twin flame union, you will be free of the mental traumas, okay? The, the, you will heal to the point that those, your mind will be very blank. You know, my mind is blank most of the time, unless I'm dealing with a lot of detailed stuff. I, I get, it's very difficult for me now to be in a very masculine energy for too long, um, I need to get back into my feminine. Very, it's very difficult for me to manage that now um, because I know when it, if my twin and I are meant to come together in this life, I need. There's another layer of femininity that God is holding on, waiting for my twin to rise into his masculine, so I can completely surrender because um, I can't fully surrender into that yet because there's a protective measure. I will just attract too much darkness into my life. Because remember, when feminine energy becomes super sensitive, you attract even darker energies to that sensitivity because it's very rare for divine feminines to be in such utter uh, place of um, complete surrender and sensitivity because the masculines are there to create that create a um, protective layer, a shield. We'll get into that into another channel teaching. But Spirit is saying that when the twins come together, that the merging of the energies naturally uh, merge together in their protective shield where the feminine can be completely in her natural feminine energy and the masculine can be in that natural masculine energy and both will not will be completely free and that essence of freedom will be there that there won't be that attached addictive codependency between them and that's the healing that we do in separation and that's why twin flame connection is so freeing the reason the masculine runs is because the potency of that love makes it feel trapped because the masculine's mind, it could be also the feminine runs too, uh, that mindset is still stuck in the old paradigm of what is controlling. Oh my God, I can't let this person in and that passion. Oh my God, how can we manage that and control that? But do you see, that's why other karmic partners and other situations need to come in to show that person, that divine twin, where they're still having elements to heal in the mental capacity, in the mind, 
the water, the emotions, the fire, the actions. Are you listening to inspired action when God tells you to do it? When spirit just tells you you have to move now? Or is that from a, a action because it's from compromising and debating with somebody from actions that you're just working through and trying to start your own fire, right? And how is that honoring your temple and manifesting in your 3D world, right? So my advice to you, Spirit, is me tell you this, to, to look at those four elements in your life and to start to implement and spirit to sing set goals for yourself. What does that look like when you are fully healed, your four elements? And what does that look like when you when you aren't healed? How is that in the relationships in your life right now? And what does that look like in the relationship that you want to manifest and create in your life? And spirit is saying the key to here is complete freedom. Right, because you can be in relation and commitment and marriage, sacred marriage with your twin, and still be completely free. And that is the oxymoron that a lot of people who are not on the twin, the twin flame journey do not understand. But it is a very freeing connection. Okay, spirit is saying, re-listen to that. A lot of info came through very, very clear, very beautifully. I didn't even have to pause the video at all. It just flowed right out. So here you go, guys. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know about the teachings that came through today. Let me know about the four elements and, and if that will help you implement that on your own soul's journey and your growth. And I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel to grow. If you want to work with me further, take a look down below. Send me an email. And I'm sending you guys so much love. Bye, guys.